So welcome back to uh, Robert and to Kosi, who's going to talk about mind-focused coaching. And uh, we're going on to the second axis, Robert. Yes, yes. So the second axis is actually probably the, the defining point that differenti differentiates mind-focused coaching from many other psychological interventions. Mm -hmm. Our focus is on what versus why. Okay. Mm -hmm. We focus on the what of your life, here now, what's going on in your life. Not so much the why this is happening, but what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Koti can describe that in much more detail. When you ask why, this is taking you to the past, <clears throat> your past experience, and you are working on something very subjective. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? So you can answer everything and it takes you to blame yourself or blaming others. Mm -hmm. But when you ask what happened, you can't describe, you have parameters, objective parameters. You can describe something. You can describe what happened and it, it teaches you to be aware of yourself. I can tell you, I can tell you, I start sweating, my palms were sweating, my mouth got dry. You have parameters to check and to test. And even you can test your if you are progressing. So it takes you to a way, to a place that you are really aware of yourself, mm -hmm. not blaming, not judging, only being aware of what happened in your environment and what happened in yourself. And from that point, you can start thinking about how to change this. It's a very strong it's a very strong point it's a very interesting actually well i say it's very interesting it's interesting to me i uh, spent 10 years coaching primary children and one of the key points i made is that the question why except for in the scientific method as to why we got a result that's different other than that reason the question why is one of the most disempowering and depressing things that you can do because all of the answers are made up by your brain and they relate nothing at all to the what so so tell me more about this robert it, you know it's it's very funny that you mentioned children because this is in fact that's how we came to appreciate the what versus why concept um i have a number of children and what we always found was if you ask a child why did you do that? The most likely response you're going to get is a shrug and I don't know. Yeah. Which is completely accurate, totally accurate. Okay. But if you ask a child, what did you just do? Okay. What just happened? Okay. They'll, that child will be able to tell you what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, oftentimes you will then get an additional narrative, right? You'll say, well, he hit me first <laughs> or some such, right? Okay. So what is a question that actually opens conversation, opens dialogue, including your own dialogue with yourself? Why is a question that very often just shuts it right down. Mm -hmm. And the entire, the concept of mind-focused coaching is always to see something you didn't see before. So if I ask what, I can look at all the elements, I can look at all the facets of what is going on and see things and see opposites, see possibilities that I didn't recognize before. Why tends to sort of drill down and you, it really closes things. It doesn't open things. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I don't necessarily want to throw a spanner in the works, but um, <clears throat> it is my want. I think most people that have done any research into the brain or consciousness or, or anything of that nature, <clears throat> excuse me, will appreciate that although we all appear to live in the same physical space, our interpretations, even and especially, frankly, down to the word and the meaning of a word. So how... <sighs> Okay, the question is twofold. How can you guide people that don't have this skill yet through your coaching? And okay. how do you know that what they're conceiving of is possible? 
So let's address the first question first. When you, when people are almost uh, trained, if you will, they're socialized to, to think in terms of why. But as Koti was mentioning, very often asking why is really an element of ascribing responsibility. I have a cartoon on root cause analysis. Root cause analysis was, was, has been the, you know, the management technique for understanding, right? Okay. And the cartoon shows a man sitting at the head of a conference table with everyone, a whole bunch of people sitting around. And the caption says, before we start root cause analysis, I just want to make it very clear, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> right? right. So shifting from the focus of why to what is really shifting from the focus of subjective to objective. Let's not talk about you. Let's talk about circumstance. Let's talk about your experience. You just went through something right? And you've got all these feelings and you've got all these reactions. Let's, let's break it down. Let's parse the experience, right? And then we can, we can take it a step further and say, so of all the thoughts you could have, this is the one you had. Tell me about that. Tell me about what makes this thought more compelling than any other thought. What makes this feeling the most obvious to you of any other feeling? And you, again, you open the dialogue to express, well, here, this is what it always seems like. I, you know, I, I take this to mean X, you know, when, when she said no, that felt like a major rejection. Okay, let's talk about how that for you was identifiable with rejection. Okay? So we're constantly looking at the what of it, understanding this is how you think, this is how you process, okay? Why does it come to you this way? Let's put that on hold for a moment. Let's just focus on what it's about. And could it be something else? What opens the door for looking at, well, but what else might it be? Right. You heard a rejection, okay? That's a possibility. Any other possibilities? Is there any other way to look at this? Okay. So again, it opens possibilities as opposed to shutting down possibilities. Cote, do you think that um, people who think visually are more attuned to this naturally? Uh, I can tell you something, Jonathan. I, the, I have clients that they say, I can't see. I can't see. Even if, if you tell me, you, you, you must see something I can see. But first thing, this is wrong because otherwise you couldn't see where you park your car this morning. Yeah. So for sure yeah. you are remembering where you park your car. And the, the big thing is there is not such a thing right, right, like a reality. Mm -hmm. The reality, the life, we perceive the reality through our lenses, our filters. So that's that we are uh, centering the dialogue on what it makes you aware, not only about the other, but also about yourself. To how Robert told before, you can dialogue with yourself. What happened this morning that I started a very good morning and then some, something happened into me. I felt anxious, sad, bad, negative. What happened? So right. to know yourself is, I think, is the best way of changing your life. And when you, when you change your life, you change the environment, you, you change the whole world because the other are reacting with you. Absolutely. So this is Very interesting. Changing the world. Okay. Well, listen, that's fantastic. Uh, we're going to be back uh, straight after a break. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks very much. Uh, wave goodbye, everyone. Thank you. See ya.